So this is the community meeting for 3200 South Wallace. Uh, the applicants are seeking a zoning change from RS3 to C12. Uh, we have Nick Patikas, um, the attorney for the owners. Perfect. Nick? So thank you very much for the introduction again. My name is Nick and I've been working with Sean um, on the proposed uh, rezoning of the property to bring back the Redwood. Um, the Redwood Lodge. Um, the issue uh, from a zoning and licensing side is that the light liquor license for the Redwood was, um, it actually expired about two years ago. We have residential zoning today. So in order to bring back a, a, a tavern use, we need a zoning change to the C1 district um, to allow the use. Um, everything about the building in terms of the footprint, the eight residential units above, will all stay exactly as uh, they exist today. Obviously we have plans to do a little bit of updating, um, but I think the idea was to try and keep true to the tradition and uh, the history of, of, of the lounge. Um, the only way though, like I said, for us to get a uh, ultimately a, a tavern license, a, a liquor license um, and have a business license to operate in the city is with a zoning change. So uh, we had discussed it with the alderman um, the alderman wanted to get input from the neighbors, and here we are at the community meeting. Um, it's a little bit of a condensed um, presentation because this is this is the space. It's approximately 840 plus or minus 50, 850, yes. 850 um, and there's a 50 person occupancy. Um, none of that would change. Again, the the room we're in is what would function as uh, the new the new lounge. Um, and one of the other items that we talked about with the alderman is we are, uh, although we would be a mixed use property, most of the zoning on, on this side of the street is residential in nature. And we're committed to, if it's a concern, um, even down zoning back um, to just kind of lock in the existing building the way it is today. Um, so really no other changes other than bringing it back. Um, and I think we could if you want to talk about some of the plans for the sure. space and, and that's it. Yeah, so we largely want to keep the space as Excuse is. Me. Can you introduce yourself for the people? <laughs> oh, sorry, everyone. Uh, I met a lot of you out in the audience before. Uh, my name is Sean Wagner. I'm from the neighborhood. My family lived on 31st and Union for years. Uh, Jack Wagner, some of you may have known. Um, we want to keep this space pretty much as it is. Uh, we want to bring back a community bar meetup slash go watch a White Sox game, hang out with your friends before a, a Bears game, mm -hmm. something pretty low key, um, kind of like it used to be. And we feel that there's a need for that in the neighborhood now. And we don't want anything that's gonna disrupt any of the residents or we wanna keep everything as it is and just bring back kind of the old community tavern which we think is missing in this neighborhood. But that's it it's pretty it's short and sweet we do need a zoning change again to get to get through the licensing um but this is that's it are there any but i did have a question so i was telling him uh, my brother and sister-in-law bought a building across the street my sister older lives in this building and then i just bought property but we're you know my whole family in the last 97 here so i only have a question is that the only thing that you want to hear in the bar I don't know if you're on other rumors because you know how those spread. There'll be like a little cafe, it'll be a restaurant. I think with the bar, um, my opinion is um, uh, people in my family um, don't think that that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not my opinion because I really don't live on this block and my brother does and my sister is in this building. So um, I'm just not sure if you're going to give any lot of push for a bar. Uh, and then me, I'm just really neutral. Um, because it doesn't involve me, it just involves my loved ones across the street. I'm sure. the so, so then that's all you're going to have here is just, it's just going to be a tavern. Yeah, what it was, yes. So it's just bringing back the, the Redwood Lodge. So will there be live music or loud music? No. no. Yeah. And what's the occupancy? The occupancy? 50, 50, 50, 50, people. Yep. 50 people. We yeah. even intend to have uh, hours, maybe something along the lines of closes at 11 on weekdays and midnight on weekends. We don't expect to be a late night establishment, no loud music, no live music, just kind of like it used to be. And the owner, sure. um, that's the older man. Yeah, no, over there, the older woman. She walked in a little. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for keeping up, John. Any other questions? Okay. 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 Any
Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, we, we feel as if the bass doesn't really command for live music. I mean, it's already tight as it is. Um, we were just like something local, not like a club scene or blasting but, music. But when, okay, when I go to a bar, um, there has to be some sort of music, so there wouldn't be anything like to, like, a, I don't know what's called a jukebox, what is it called now? So you wouldn't have to come to the bar and hear the <laughs> So I think what what Good typically <laughs> thank you. Um, what I think typically happens is you have background music, or if there's a game, you could use the speakers. But again, because of the size of the space, it's it's actually quite limited. It's not if it was a two or three times as big. I certainly see the concern about okay. multiple speakers, um, but it would it be background music. Uh, hello. Yes. Okay. I'm 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 live across the street. Okay. But you, you see right now, they have a car crashing over there. Okay. And then just like because like, across the street is this uh, uh medical center, so there are a lot of people in and out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right now, I'm thinking about we have 20 chairs over here right now. Okay, that's 20 chairs. Each one driving one car from over for train. You need 20 parking. I don't think we have 20 parking space for the your customer. It's okay. the not concerned. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, for, for, for okay. Before they put a fire hydrant over there, lab every night there are people park in front of my driveway. Parking. So I have a call nine one one, and then they call. We hear people driving out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want to do that again. No, I, I we certainly appreciate. It. I think if, I'm sorry. Did you want to let know when they're done? Okay, so I think uh, we'll we'll attempt to answer your question because of the size of the building and the fifty person capacity. There's no parking requirement. And obviously we're not trying to change anything to add in more parking. I think the vision was more of a community-based or a, a neighborhood-based spot where there's a lot of walkers, people who live in the neighborhood who walk over, who get a drink and then head back home. I think you had uh, made a comment. So that was kind of the makeup of the- uh, It was all friends and family this far. I worked here for 20 years. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we didn't cut you off. I, I apologize. So, go ahead. Right. And I'll, I'll be real brief. I live two blocks away. Came here all the time when this was a bar. And my recollection is 90% of the people in here all walked here. We came to this bar. We came to this bar because we could come here, have a drink, and walk both ways. Nobody drove here. There was that. What I love about this place was, was there food? Was there a restaurant? No. But they allowed us to order a pizza and just eat it on a table back there. This was exactly what you wanted to be. It was a family oriented, family run neighborhood bar with never any developments. Never. Um, and quite frankly, uh, Jill Scheller here, we lost Shelley. We lost so many, oh, all the neighborhood bars are gone. And I won't get into the politics of it, but that was orchestrated. Once a license would go down, they try to get rid of it forever. One by one, the only neighborhood bar within walking distance here is Bernice. It's all we got. So we need it. We, we need a neighborhood bar where people can walk to the bar and walk home and meet with friends while we're here. So this would be a great, great asset. Can you miss it? We need it. So I, just, just one question. So I appreciate what you're trying to do in terms of intend to bring back what was once. Um, but there's new generations now, yeah. so the old timers are dying out. But no offense to anybody here, but I'll do respect to anybody. <laughs> but, but the fact of the matter is that it's a different generation now. You're going to attract a different crowd than you once did. But it was, and I know that's not your intent. But you did have a bar right down the street over there that was yeah. was, a, was a problem. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, different so problem. while they took liquor licenses away, they were justified. Mm -hmm. My building is two houses from here. So that's my interest. I'm also a lifelong resident of Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. My brothers played softball, they were members here. So there's history here, mm -hmm. but I'm not for it because of, I don't have the confidence in today's generation to handle themselves properly mm -hmm. as gentlemen, as ladies. Uh, it's a different generation, and I don't need that problem. They just don't. Well, I, do I think he's 100 right because these people. I mean, I used to go drinking all the time, <laughs> but I never stayed in the neighborhood. 
Mm -hmm. I was, I, my father refused to have me stay in the neighborhood. Now, all the bars that I used to go to, they're all closed. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing now. Right. Well, that sorry, for a I was here 22 years on my 31st of love. My family's all covered too. I grew up uh, coming to the Star Mountains. Um, I'm living there. I got a wife, I got kids. I need a place to go. That's all I have to come home. We have a question from from the chat from CH. Uh, question is, how will this affect parking? I think that's sort of been answered. Uh, and will there be security on premises? So we are prepared to have security if needed. Yeah, we're and 100%. I think something that we... What would they get like it's needed? What would that yeah, look like? If it's all, like, typically when it's at capacity on a Friday night or a Saturday night, something along those lines, or maybe on game days, if if it's we're getting a little bit more of a crowd one of the other things um that we've discussed again very kind of generally with the alderman is this is a two-step process and a two-step approval process the first is we have to get a zoning change to even allow the use and then we have to make an application for a liquor license as part of that process with the liquor commissioner we could work with the alderman and the liquor commissioner to put in some plan reasonable a plan of operation have reasonable constraints I, I hear exactly your concern, and I think in, we're hoping to meet you kind of in the middle where instead of not having the use come back, limiting the use so that it, at, on, a, on a weeknight, it's closed at, at 11 o'clock, that we're done, everybody's out. On the weekends, most bars are open until 2 in the morning, we would close at midnight. And just as a show that this isn't intended to turn into or attract that we'll call it out of neighborhood crowd that's only coming here because it's a late night bar. It's not their intention. Frankly, I don't think they want the hassle of that. Um, and I think the, the, the there are securities or assurances that we could put in place that would then jeopardize our license where if they got caught operating at one o'clock at night on a, a Tuesday, the, the city with or without the old, the city yeah. will go after the license. So I, I, I just want to, Put that out there that there are some ways for us to to manage it and to control it from the beginning and not let it turn into a problem before no, I, actions I, are I, taken. I totally agree. I mean, you're well intended people. You don't look like shabby people. You don't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but once they leave, there are problems. They're not your problem. So once you close those doors, and anybody. So my take is why create an issue if we can prevent it in the first place? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And and and. Listen, again, I was in this neighborhood. I played a lot of ball in this neighborhood. We we hit the camera. I know every bar that was in this neighborhood, every one of them, because I was in them mm -hmm. after games. And it was nice to, to be there, but it was a different time. It's a different time. It's a different problem. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, There's a bar two, uh, two blocks away from here. He tried to open up the bar, and he couldn't. He had a lot of influence in City Hall, and he could not get a license. Yeah, so I, then how are you going to get a license? And this, if this guy couldn't get a license, how could you do it? I, I, I mean, not taking anything away from you. That's the way. That's the way. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's all so, business. I, I see a couple things too, and I, I apologize that I seem like a triple book tonight, but I'm, I'm really happy to see so many people come out to participate in this conversation. Uh, these meetings for me are intended to hear all of the concerns, the issues that you're worried about when it comes to a business like this opening up two doors down for me. Uh, my, and, and look, I may not make any decision tonight, but I want to hear what anybody has to say that I have to take that into consideration. But with like anything else that we're doing, I work towards hopefully the best compromise possible. I mean, and hearing the concerns right now, and I can tell you some of the things that we've done with other businesses, and I can give you examples of when a business has not been operating um, above board or uh, causing a nuisance for neighbors. I take them to task on it every time. I've got several businesses right now, but the uh, green metal um, scrap yard. It's not a bar, but it's a scrap yard that's been a problem in Canaryville for 15 years. And it wasn't until I got into office and took them with a BACP into a nuisance meeting um, for community meetings that things started to clean up. And you know, we're we're hopefully moving that business along to get them out of the neighborhood. So I take that, I mean, this is for you guys too. Right. This is not, you have to take this seriously because I'm not, not on my watch. 
right? So if I make a promise to the community that we're going to keep real close tabs on you, especially as you're starting to open up, that we want to create a good plan of operations that's including, that might include, hey, every night, one of your staff members has got to go around the block, pick up any bottles or cans that you see two blocks around a perimeter, right? That's something that I think the community can reasonably expect from you as a business here because you're part of this community. Absolutely. We 100% agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. We want to keep the community the way it is and we don't want to see change. We want to not disrupt anyone's life. We just want to bring something back that we feel that there's a need for. And there is some, uh, some want for it at least. And that's our plan. But we really, we have no intention to disrupt anyone's daily living whatsoever. I have some questions because I live over here. I love job, but I live over here for 40 years. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then, and then uh, once a while, I have to pick up the glasses and then saw someone pee on the tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't want to see that again. Right now, I have a camera. I don't want to look at the camera if people are doing that. Right. Yeah. I hundred percent. We we, it's, we hear it loud and clear. And again, I, I would just offer, as the alderman kind of mentioned, commitments that we could make. Certainly we can't control what every single customer or patron is going to do, but we can control cleanup. We can control kind of just having somebody patrol and just kind of keep an eye on things. There are things that we could do to be a responsible business owner to reduce that risk. A question. Yes. Growing up uh, back in the forties, fifties, drugs were called dope and like that. Anything related, something similar nowadays is to call something else now. Uh, nothing with drug, drug related. Oh no, no, or no similar. No, no. we we're, we're this oh, no. is maybe in jail. Right. That's right. The license would be the least of the problem. Yeah, they call it by different names. Yeah, so. no, they're, they're absolutely not. That's absolutely. Okay, that's never. all I'm concerned about. Sorry, Julie, yes, sir. You I live 20 feet from the city. For me, the taxes we pay and the amount we pay for our home, the last thing I want is a bar on the corner. I, I kind of said that you we used to come to the Redwood, but the owner then would say, get out. Three o'clock, you shut the door, you are out. If he didn't like you or something was going on, hey, you out. And that's how it worked. So there was a whole different atmosphere back then. Now you can't really tell someone like, hey, you need to get out. There's a process to make some move. I'm already picking up bottles of liquor across the street from me because we have bad tenants, like renters that are on the block. Adding a bar to the mix, it's going to attract the bad elements that are already on the block because it's a spot to come to. If you can't party in your own building, They'll come drink here. And then that spillage does affect the neighbors, like it or not. I mean, we have the Remova coming. That's a destination for the barn. The foot traffic from there, I don't think, would come here. Maybe they probably would go to Maria's. But that's busy. I mean, it's it's kind of like a, a commercial area. Right here it's a commercial area. So it's quiet now. But right here. I came in here with a lot of the concern you answered. So thank you for that. Um, I guess I, but my comment on this is a couple of things. Number one, it's going to be on our own, right? Ultimately, it's not these guys. They don't, they are going to run a business. And ultimately, when we vote somebody in as our alder person, we're saying we believe that Alder Woman Lee is going to go and represent us. And that's what I do. And, and so the bottom line is, I do, I, I have a 20, I have a kid who's a senior in high school. I live a block over. So I've been here for 20 years. I'm not a newbie. But the fact of the matter is, if we continue to say that we're not going to do things because we fear that it won't be like the old school, if we fear that it won't be the person whose 14 generations have been in here, I just say that because of this. I walked in here tonight and I was I was a guest in truth. But I'm also believing that we have to do we, we have to give young entrepreneurs a chance yes. and, and that's what we're not doing anymore. And so what happens is we don't do anything. And let's say somebody who has a whole lot of coal in the city decides that when they ask for the same permit that these guys are asking for to be rezoned, they could say, okay, we'll give you that. They could tear this down and put in a liquor store. That's the same type of a, a permit allows that kind of change. These guys are saying, hey, we embrace it. This is a very big thing. And they're saying we're not going to be open very late. 
I this is my take on it. Let's give them a try. And if it doesn't work, yes, you guys, it sucks. Chicago sucks trying to get things slow. You know, the, the politicians can really be difficult. But the fact of the matter is, we have the power. And if we exercise the power, I like to think that if it's not working out, we can have it handled. But I think that just to keep saying that, you know, the old guard or the kind of person, you don't know what kind of person is going to come in here, especially if they're not driving. You know, it's going to probably be any one of us or our neighbors maybe comes in here. So I'm just saying maybe to just try to keep an open mind about it because these are young guys who look like they want to bring something into the neighborhood that hey, we, we have a desire for. Not me, for I'm not coming here to drink, quite frankly. I don't drink. But the fact of the matter is I respect the fact that I would like to see maybe a business here instead of a, a closed gate every time I walk by. And yeah, you guys, I pick up the crap around my yard just like you because all the socks dance. It's annoying. But the fact of the matter is, I tell myself it's kind of the price for doing business where I live. And it's everywhere, right? Everybody wants a business. So have a hand in what kind of business comes to us. These are two young guys who are saying, hey, we're going to keep it like this. Yeah, there'll be a jukebox. We'll keep it low. We'll check the perimeter. Geez, if they check the perimeter for bottles, we're already ahead of the game, right? I mean, we've already got a, a circle cleaner than it was. So I'm just saying, guys, keep an open mind because the neighborhood needs stuff to keep going forward, and we don't know what the new person looks like till we let them in. That's all. Thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, I just, I just want to kind of second that. I live uh, a block and a half away. And I would love a place for it to be at the end of the night or come home from a wedding or something, stop for a drink or watch the end of the sax game and exactly walk home. Not, I don't want a place where I get to park and drive. I want a place where I can walk. And I mean, I'm from the neighborhood. I don't want to say how old I am, but probably the oldest child in the world. But anyway, um, yeah, so I do miss the neighborhood bars immensely. And not to get fall down drunker, but to run into people and say, hi, how you doing? It's, it's a neighborhood thing that I've always been used to that I totally miss. And and like and everybody thinks the younger generation is trouble. I don't think these guys don't look like trouble at all. Right? And I would like to support young, young like yeah. say entrepreneurs. But you want to call yourself business people? I'd like to support you too. Um, Appreciate it. Yes, yeah, so someone said earlier, well, this new generation, they're not like us. They're not wonderful like we were. <laughs> so let me ask anybody who's never been, if you want to see what type, first of all, this will be filled with people like me. I'm a retired English teacher. My friend's a judge. We're here every Friday and Saturday. Our friend who works for Morgan Stanley, he was here every day. Everybody at this bar, there were no strangers. We all know each other. And I'm still alive. I will come here. The judge will come here. Morgan Stanley will come here. But if you want to see the next generation, if you haven't done this, go to Bernice's. It's magic. You go into Bernice's, it's filled with young artists, poets, musicians. They are young, bright, great kids. It doesn't matter that I'm 73, but they've set me anyway. They are good young. That's the type of people will be attracted to a place like this. A good neighborhood. Uh, where don't worry, these chairs are going to be taken all by people who walk. Mm -hmm. And if I lived two blocks away, or I'd see four blocks <laughs> away, I'd probably be against this too. But some of these anecdotes are being told. Peeing on the tree, that person didn't come from here. The bottle across the street, oh, that, didn't, that didn't come from here. Oh, no, didn't no. come from here. You know, comes from oh. Saxon, come to, actually, I learned now the bottles come from the tenants who live across the street. That has nothing to do with this place. Don't do it this way. This would be an asset to the community. It's something we're missing. And again, if I looked across the street, maybe I would be for it too. But I look a black and a half. And we need it. We need this. We need this. Wow. Sir, one, sir, I just want to be clear. I, was, I wasn't calling the next generation evil. My kid, I have three children in their 20s, 130. I'd be calling them evil if I believed that. I don't. So what were you? I'm sorry. I said they're different than this generation. They're not all gentlemen. They're not all ladies. That's what I said. Oh, well, okay. Everybody in Bernice is their gentlemen. Well, that's that's fine. If they're all but here, we'll see. We'll have to see them. And I, and I do, and I think well said by the young lady over there. Um, I, I do think we should promote businesses for young people and entrepreneurs. I, I preach that to my own family. Why alcohol? Why a bar? Why not any other business? I mean, I would make the argument the that no other businesses ask us to even come here. I, I understand. I understand. And, and, and it was part of the process. Mm -hmm. Sure. 
we got to do this because it's part of the process. And all I'm saying is it's there's there's more of an influence of the product being sold here than another business could. Okay, and that and that implication could have bearings on a residential street like this. And I I've seen it. I, I'm not talking. I'm talking from experience, and I've seen it from two blocks down there to one block down there, even on 33rd Street. And I know the guys who own all those parks. So I want to be fair. Sure. Yeah, following up on what was talked about earlier regarding fire and security, would there be able to be a condition put in place that security would stick around for like an hour after what the day? Typically, yeah. So typically when you do have some type of security guard, somebody in here, again, on the game nights or something like that, um, we have a little bit more control because it's a private agreement. So we could say or work into the agreement, whether it's a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour afterwards to make sure. And again, I think we're coming from a more realistic approach that there's a capacity of 50. Right. So it isn't 250. It isn't a larger than that. We're optimistic that we'll be able to really keep an eye on what's going on because it's a limited number of people. Sure. That said, to be able to have a security guard, just the presence, I think on a busy day goes a long way. And I, 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 we've already talked about it and we're open to it. I don't think financially we could have a security guard here at all hours every day, but game days, playoffs, football, Hopefully. Sunday. Playoffs. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next year. Yeah. Yeah. Fair, <laughs> but, you know, something along those lines. It's it's reasonable. Absolutely, that's yeah, absolutely reasonable. Like after closing time, there's some concern. Right, but we no, hundred percent. But we also, I think, and I don't want to put any words in anybody's mouth, but in talking with the alderman, one of the first things was, "What are the hours?" Because I don't think we'd be here if we were anticipating a two or three o'clock in the morning bar. I, I don't think it's war. I don't think it's needed. It's not what the yeah. run would was. Yeah. And that's, that's not at all. I mean, I, that's not even words in my mouth. That was literally the first question. Yeah. Out of my what mouth. Are the hours? Um, and because knowing that this is in a heavily residential area, but also knowing that this had operated as ever for many, many years. Um, right. Uh, that, and I, so we tried to, I'm sorry, but yeah, we tried right. to mimic that and say, well, the, the Redwood wasn't a super late bar. We, we can live with midnight. We don't need two or three o'clock in the morning. It's not going to help us keep the community happy because we really do envision the two or three blocks surrounding us as kind of our customer base. So right. if we can't keep them happy right. because we're bringing people in from, you know, all parts of the city, the we're going to be picking off our, our, our base. Right. So it just did that. That was something right from the start. It, it just kind of set us apart, I think, from a typical farm. Yeah, so friends, we can kind of feet. They have other bar over there. What's wrong with that bar? That's that's not a well. That's, that's, a, that's a VFW. Yeah. That's the VFW post. So it's it, it's a private. It's essentially a private club. Just right. so you join you you join the club. You have to be a member to go in, or you have to know somebody's got to bring you in. Right. It's tiny. You have to be a veteran. Yes, you right. have to be a veteran to be able. Yeah, but to but you can't be able to be a long. But it's not. A, it, it's really not. A, Simon, I don't think it's a place where a lot of people in the neighborhood seem to go. If you're not a veteran already. Right. I mean, like, right. I, I think it's probably the same 10 to 15 guys that go there a couple times a week. Regulars. Yeah, the regulars. There, there's a question in the chat. Oh, sure. Uh, when are we talking about opening this? I think it's a little too early to tell. Right. Right. Uh, well, we there's, did, a uh, there's, a, there's two processes. Yeah. So just to answer the question, um, the zoning change process is typically a 90 day process from when we start to actually file an application, assuming we had support to go forward with the zoning change only after the zoning change, can we start an additional 90 day process? So I okay. talked with somebody, so we're probably looking at springtime. If everything were to line up, if all the approvals, all the inspections, the applications if everything stayed on course, I think the earliest that we'd be able to open the doors with a license would be spring fact. And will there be security cameras installed, including the alley area? Yes, yes. And you'd be willing to give access to the Ninth District Police? Absolutely. Also? Okay, so great. Absolutely. There's a, a hand. Uh, I have kind of more like a suggestion. I feel like I'm the youngest one here, 25. Um, I know that 
we are worried about the crowd as I am with going on with 20 year old and a part of how I like to be calm and peaceful at 25. But one of the things you guys all to do is have the age restriction. It kind of will take away from the market of people who are able to drink, but I've seen bars that are 25 and not only. You know, that would work best like a 21 year old who's only got time for liquor. The ones that are probably wanting to leave the club or you know the bar because they're drinking their hands. So you know they you know the 21 year olds want to be able to be loud, right? So that could be something to consider in order to have a place open. Yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, well, uh, the reason is that because you wanna keep only uh, the but it are only Friday and Saturday, right? Okay. But what about the, the days when uh, there is, uh, they are not going to be no one checking the IDs if uh, like uh, oh, you said that uh, uh, people coming? You can just buy a drink and give it to another person at the age. No, so that's no. going to be a problem sometimes. No. We will find everyone. In I worked world. for more than 30 years in, uh, as a bartender. So I know how people sneak uh, the drinks around. So this is another people's term. That would be something we closely monitor, as we know, it's highly illegal to provide reminders. Um, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is that you are what is going to be checking on the on the doors. There will still be more people staff where we can hopefully over You know, sometimes people just they are sneaking to getting uh, drinks around. Seven o'clock. Yeah. 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 It would be a priority. So yeah, we make a priority. Yeah, you have to be very careful. Yeah, sure. Making sure that no one I don't know. If there is no any design or nothing like that, how the bar is going to be. So why you don't know, scale the bar? So they can be a really uh, not anybody can kind of meet the bar. Yeah, yeah they're just having uh, somebody at the front door. Whether right. it's a security guard or just uh, right. a doorman. Someone has to do it to make sure for sure that anybody who's coming under 21. So, I do it now all the bars in downtown. You have to go So, and I'll, I'll, let me just comment on that too. I, when I tell you I take these things seriously, I'm not kidding you. I mean, I, Julie and others have been to other meetings that I've been a part of. Uh, I have no problem taking a business to task if they are not being good neighbors. I don't know. Do you guys live in the neighborhood right now? Or yes, 30 for the more. 30 for the more. So you guys are here. So that's also one of the things I'm always interested in is when people want to invest in our neighborhood is that they're from the neighborhood too. All right, so were they would brought you... up in the neighborhood? Were you brought up in this neighborhood? With the high school deal sale, yeah. Oh, okay. I did tell I was like 10, then I came back after college. 38th and normal. And then 31st and union right here. Oh, okay. So to... yeah. I want to point out that it says something when people from the neighborhood want to invest in the neighborhood. Like that, because they've got skin in the game, you're going to know where they live. And hopefully by the end of the night, we'll be able to get phone numbers from everybody. Not not for those other reasons, okay? But yeah. for in case we need to, if there, you have got a concern. Sir, if they open and if everything goes that way, and if you see something wrong, I, I would want you to have access to either one of them to blow up their phone. Blow up my phone because tell me about them. Yeah, right? This wouldn't be to them. It'd be somewhere else. Fair enough. Fair enough. My point is that there are there there are mechanisms that the city uses, and I know when businesses first open, and if I bring it to somebody's attention, I can have the the city vice team here any night of the weekend to <clears throat> just spot check right. yeah. to make sure that all of the things that they're supposed to be doing to operate above board is is happening. It's the bottom line is you're here to make money. Maybe you're appealing to the old clientele or the neighborhood, but you're here to make money. We have to sustain the business. So to make money, we need people that are going to spend money. We bought them. Not just like back in the day, like you dropped a 20 and you could bring back. You're gonna you're gonna have to have a price, you know what I mean? Like your your price points and things like that mm -hmm. to sustain. So it will attract the business. It's not gonna attract just the neighborhood old really, you know, that makes absolutely thing. no sense whatsoever. Oh. You, we, we've got to make money, but all the money's going to come from the bad source. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. No, because slightly like as, as long as things are memorialized, clean up the cameras. Because this happened before where I was in Bronzeville. My, you know, they sold us the dream on 35th and Prairie, and it was like the bane of our existence for the 16 years I lived there. It was a liquor store. It's still a liquor store. They opened a bar, then a restaurant. Like all these things started happening. Because we had granted zoning, you know, so I've been down this road with business before. So that's why I said, 
I'm right up by the chair. Look at the side. Yeah. Right but right I'm straight. saying, could you still, would this be leased out for parties, private right, events, even though you say 50 is the capacity? If, again, so. Well, here's the thing. If it was a party of 50, maybe, but if it's more than that, right. again, again, for the alt to the alderman's point, if there's an occupancy and we're beyond that, but it's not the alderman, it's the fire marshal who shuts you down. So there are well, if if you see a hundred people right. walking in and out and call 911, they're not calling her no, person with all due the respect, they're calling the fire department to bring it in, say they're past occupancy. Right. So there are a number of precautions in place. And I, I just want to try and uh, we've said it a few times. The idea was to try and reestablish the corner bar, the neighborhood bar. And will will other people be interested in the neighborhood or just outside the neighborhood? Po possibly, probably. It's a, it's kind of with all due respect, it's a little bit of a relic. Like it's really kind of a cool nostalgic spot. I think it is going to attract some people on a regular basis, though. I think the business is anticipating relying on the neighbors that made the Redwood what the Redwood was. So I, 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 again, I can't project who's gonna be here, who the customers are. I can't project prices, but I also think that a neighborhood bar is not gonna be, you know, like a River North $30 right. bourbon. I, I just don't see that. Right, we wouldn't be able to, yeah. We have I don't think it'd be, it's not sustainable. I, I just don't think it is. I think it's just, a, it's a different animal. So how long is the process after this? What does the process look after this meeting tonight? What what happens? So this? here's what I'll say. I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna make a decision tonight whether or not I'm gonna support a, a zoning change. Okay. What I'll say again, Carlos, hopefully you've been taking lots of notes. I mean, we're we're here to listen to, to what the concerns are, and that goes towards a plan of operation. Now I know that the plan of operation doesn't come into place until you're applying for the liquor license. Correct. Okay, but I would want some agreement on that before I even consider the zoning change. And we'll tell you if I do support it, we can we can do an immediate zoning change back to something so that they couldn't do something with it different other so, after the fact. Again, I'm always yeah. hesitant to interrupt an alderman, yeah. but we did um I know again, um, but we did talk about that too, because as yeah. I said earlier, the rest of the block on this side, the corners zone differently, but this block is entirely residential. One of the, in addition to the occupancy, in addition to the plan of operation, in addition to having a diligent neighborhood keeping an eye on things, we could also downzone the property back to residential so that the what if of a future use immediately goes away. Right. It puts the next use in the same position we're in today Coming back because to we don't have the zoning for anything else. So there are, I think, at least three or four precautions and assurances that what we're proposing is what's going to actually happen. And there'll be a protection in place where if it doesn't work out, they're back to square one with residential zoning. And that's something that we, from our first meeting with the alderman, we were completely open to. Okay, so I forgot to mention, it's like, I live so close. And then uh, most of the time I see the people down the bottom and look around, I see the window sticker. It doesn't have Chicago sticker. So, is that, so that's about outside Chicago people. And then probably they, they come from a game, you know. Sometimes they say they come over there, so I have to clean it up because a lot of people from Hingley passing by my street. So I always clean it up. My neighbor knows, like, I will clean up the whole block. Yeah. And then they we clean up the whole block, they could keep walking over it. Okay. So that's why I clean a lot. If you have bottle over there, I always pick it up. Yeah. But Someone over there, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, but then, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but there's no only bottle. But a lot of people who wait for the CTA, they leave a bath, they leave coffee things there. So I have to clean there. Oh, okay. So this, no. Sounds like bottle, a good candidate yeah. for a wire basket. I wonder if you can touch your own coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over there. I'm surprised Simon never mentioned that to me because he's in my office a lot. <laughs> I, I, can, I wasn't here. <laughs> the trash is not, a, is not a problem that is unique to right here. It's all over here. Right? The, the, Sox, the, the people that go to Sox games and people are just jerks in general anymore. Yeah, I mean, like people just, from the they'll, school. if they're yeah. waiting for somebody, they'll clean out their cart and stuff everything right there. there I can't control human behavior of people who may or may not be coming into this establishment. 
things that I can control or can try to manage is putting transfer septic holes in places where we feel like there's a concentration, like at a bus stop, yeah, there's, right? There's, so uh, we just put a couple on Archer, um, uh, Archer and Bonfield and Archer and Truth. We're trying to do more. And actually, here would not be a bad idea. The problem that we have with wire baskets is that a lot of apartment people, rather than walking to the back of the house to dump it in, uh, the, in the trash in the alley, right, right. launch their residential trash into the wire baskets. Now, we don't want that either because those are open, right? right? And those are open for rats to jump into. Yeah. You guys aren't selling food. Uh, so I don't think, I think it's less of a problem there. I can address some of those things, but I, honestly, and I, and I appreciate everybody's comments. I hear all of you. And like I said, I'm not going to make a decision tonight. So please don't think that I'm walking away with like some preset notion. We're going to, we're going to walk away from this with a draft. We'll come up with a draft. We will redistribute it. And I would love to bring everybody back together so that you can see what they're, what they're going to agree to, if this is going to happen um, and see what you think of it. And we'll have another opportunity for feedback. What I don't want to do is have a business open in a community that's totally against it to begin with. That, that's not good for anybody. That just isn't. I, I don't like your neighbors to be mad at neighbors. Um, that's not that's not the kind of community I'm interested in. But I am interested in more development in our community. And we have to we have to do things to invite people. So when people are interested, especially when they're from the neighborhood, um, I get excited about it. But it's not some sort of done deal. We have to hold everybody accountable. You guys are gonna hold me accountable. We meet my phone rings off the phone, we take head emails all the time. People go through my parents and other people that know me that they hand me suggestions about things that need to be done or if a tree needs to be trimmed. Um, but know that I'm here to listen. If anybody wants to talk to me after this um, and come in or give me a call, we can set up a time. But I think my next steps would be to, after this meeting, take all of the ideas and the, the, the concerns that everybody has, see if we can come up with a good plan of operations that they could agree to. It's palatable for everybody. Uh, then we can move to the next step of, you know, with everything, all the boxes are checked off and that's a big hit. Again, it's a big hit. Uh, then we move to a zoning change, right? And again, that's not a guarantee that they're gonna get their license either. Right. That's, that, that piece of it is not entirely up to me. Right. They, have to, they have to meet all the requirements for that. Um, yeah, I'll hang out here if anybody has any other questions for me. Oh, okay. no, that was Ken. Okay. Now you ask. Yes, I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll yeah. talk to the word about it. We'll yeah, because we'll get a wire basket. The, the, the people come out from the some kind they have done something for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Before they had one over there, it, it refreshed my memory. They have one over there. I didn't see it for over 10 years. <laughs> Yeah. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah, because the road has changed, so I took yeah. the two minutes away. Yeah. Hey, I live across the street from this area. Oh, yeah. So they're dropping their coffee cup, they're half a donut, and they go to the dentist, leave their mask. Every day when I walk in, I pick up something on my way into the house. And the school, the same way. Yeah. School, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, I talked to the cross, you know, my wife's the principal, yeah. and we talked for the channels. There's only so much they can do, too. Okay. Yeah, that's your it gets better, it gets worse sometimes. Yeah. Driving through the alleys. Yeah. Um, names and emails or phone numbers. If you want to be invited to get a we'll, we'll put it out there, but we won't send, you won't get a notice in the mail. Like if some of you got notices in the mail, that won't happen for the second meeting. So please write your name, phone number, or email on here as to how we can contact you for when we reconvene. Yeah, there's a pad over here. Just make sure you give us your information so that we can tell you when the next meeting will be. I will say I will say this: if you receive the notice uh, via the newsletter, it will be in the newsletter. In the newsletter, yeah. if you got the notice in the mail, is what I'm talking about. You will not get a direct piece of mail addressed to you. If you get the newsletter, it will be announced in the newsletter at least two weeks in advance. We'll uh, and we'll post it to Facebook as well. Okay. And then these are we're recording all of this right now, so this will go online. And we have a YouTube channel. Your friends who didn't make it, who want to see what happened here. I'm all about transparency here, guys. We're going to be famous. You know, famous. Yeah, I'm going to be happy that you were famous. I did. I did. That's the first thing I said. Yep. I, I let them know we're recording now. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make one last point, then I promise that's the last I'll say. 
Uh, I came here not knowing these two young men, uh, not knowing what to expect, but I'm very impressed by, by the fact they're from the neighborhood. You went to deal with sell. You can't get more local than that. And I, they're bright young people who seem sincere and earnest. I spent them tonight, but I trust them. And I think the more relationship you have with these two gentlemen, you'll also learn that they have only the best interests of the neighborhood here. And, and everybody yeah. in the neighborhood yeah. does what across the street yeah. is all for it. So, yeah. Yeah. Look, if, if I didn't think that there was potential here, I, I wouldn't have brought them, I wouldn't have given them the opportunity to have a community meeting. I'll just tell you that up front. Like, not everybody that walks in the door gets a community meeting for a potential zoning change. Uh, you know, that we all, I don't live next door, I don't live two doors down, but I've got friends like Simon who live right across the corner and it matters to me how he's treated as a new person. Right. Right. Sure. It absolutely does. Uh, so I, I, what I want more than anything for anybody that owns a business in our community is that they understand that they're a part of it. They're not just here to run a space and like come and go and leave. If you live somewhere else, fine. I, I can't control that, but you're investing here. So if you want your investment, to work and you want that you want neighbors who are looking out for your investment while you're not here someone broke your window if you don't live here you don't have an alarm who's gonna call you all right so this is the kind of community that i know we have yeah and um, um, again I, I i do agree with what you said you know i'm impressed with you too so i don't take this personally in terms of our position on this my position i want to be clear is in the product that's being sold here. Alcohol. And the, yeah. That's right, it's a drug. And it's an influencer on behavior. And depending who it is here spending money to do it, the problem goes out there once it passes. I don't know why it's something you want to put on your plate when you can avoid it altogether. I don't know that. If it's for the common good, I don't think that's what I'm hearing. Here. But, but what I see here is a lot of people have been here, they have nostalgic feelings toward this, I don't want that to be an influencer for you to make that decision move forward. Which is why I'm not making the decision Good. right now. Good. Uh, well, and I can... Not now, but I don't want yeah. to influence your thinking when, when you leave this place because it could. It could. It, so it, this please, is, this is not the full disclosure. It, this is not the only place that uh, I'm considering for a liquor license. So, and I don't know that you get. What's your name, sir? Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Thank you for being here. Uh, so the remote is opening on 35th Street. I had to lift the liquor moratorium on 35th, uh, on Halsted between 35th and 36th. So that whole block now for one year is open for people to apply for liquor licenses. That, as you pointed out, Julie, is a destination, right? So we want more life over there. I get this is a residential area. I also think that the diversity in our ward in terms of businesses this is, a, this is a neighborhood that used to have a tavern on every corner, right? And that was way too far in one direction. And there were reasons why people got shut down, like you said, the bad operators. And that's why there was so much lockdown, if you will. I think, you know, it's time for the pendulum to swing back just a little bit. I'm not, and I'm not a person who's into extremes yet. So that's why I take, I slow roll these things. It's probably not great for them that I'm, dra that I'm not dragging my feet. I'm taking my time to make sure that I am considering everything that I'm hearing and not just from the people that are here because I'm gonna give myself time to hear more feedback from other people as well. If other people wanna come in and talk to me, you know, I wanna to talk to um, wanna to talk to some of the other business owners around here too, to understand how, how they feel about this. So, you know, do I want problems with alcohol? Absolutely not. But I don't, I'm not gonna assume that alcohol will right. automatically bring that either. I think that's about how the proprietors behave. And if they are just here to make money and they're serving every 14 year old that walks in, um, then that's an issue, right? But they're gonna have to be able to look somebody in the eye and say, you know what, big guy, I think you should go home now. They have the ability as bartender, you were a bartender, you could cut people off, right? That's about good management. And I think what you're hearing here, you know what the expectations are. Absolutely. Yes, John. First first time I ever met her older woman here, first thing she said was, I only want to do what's good for our neighborhood. And I think that covers everything in it. 
thank you. Thank you for saying that. I like I said, I take all this. This is not a it's not a small decision. It was it would have been done by now. You know, we would have had this, we wouldn't have had it here. We would have had it in the, in the tiniest room possible right. and it would keep me an hour because that's that's what other look, others of my colleagues may do that. It's not it's not a convenient thing to bring together a big group of people and be open for whatever questions people are gonna throw at you. But that's the way I believe that we should be operating as a community. And I want to listen to everybody. It's not always easy. No, no. And if you have been some of these CAPS meetings that I've been in. Uh, uh, yes, Simon. Oh, if, 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 okay, if you cannot get the liquor license, are you going to open Russia? <laughs> no, it's not in the plans. Uh, <laughs> only people who are driving for a visa. I'm not we can't technically open up the restaurant right now either. We don't have the restaurant. We don't have the or the ventilation. I mean, you'd have yeah, to. Yeah. Is it the same show? If I remember correctly, you say you don't need to open the bar, uh, the auto yeah. shop, the grocery shop. What is this currently? So, this is our three. Right, so, so, today it's. It's not the Today it can't change. Yeah, today, today RS3 is single family residential three stories. Now, this is what would be referred to as a non conforming. Because this, I'm going to get into a little nitty gritty oh, here, but no. I don't know if you covered it earlier. They missed the cutoff by a few months, right? Was it a few months? Yeah. A few weeks. Three and a half. Three, well, it was about three months. So the previous owner had, had kept up the liquor license, in fact, and if they, their sale would have gone through within 18 months, this would, there would have been no, we wouldn't have been sitting here. That would have just been a transfer of a license. Yeah, we were under contract for about six months and we, we missed it. So it's not that easy to do anything else here. I Whatever they do here that is not, you can't even do ground floor residential in here right, right now. Right, right now, and that's, and that's yeah. a great point. And again, yeah. not to belabor the topic, what else could we do with the space? Nothing unless we came back to the alderman for a different request. So right. it's kind of literally, it's locked in its current uh setting unless we get a zoning change and even if we wanted to do ground floor residential i'd have to rezone because we're already in non conforming right. use and we'd be expanding right because you got because, upstairs. exactly because we already have eight right. units upstairs right well thanks guys i appreciate it i wish you all the best i Thank have you. an 18 year old he comes here and drinks i'm crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. we already know what I you are sure. yeah. we, we appreciate it so. Yes, sir. Uh, 31st in the union right there, Jack Wagner. My dad's name is Steve. Yeah, I think it was my grandfather, Jack. He worked for the park district and then he was the precinct captain over here. Yeah, yeah. 30, 3152 South Union. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. No, so I, I, he went to De La Salle. I actually went to St. Lawrence. I went to St. Lawrence. He went into a cell. Bernie, Bernie. Okay. Uh, what was his name? Here. Years. No, I don't remember him. He was gone. Okay. Well, I think I think that concludes the, the meeting. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. It's great to meet you. Uh, we'll see you around. Yeah, we'll see you around. Uh,